Welcome to Short Arts. This is my take on Lily Cop Richards' She Wolf from 2019. The artwork is made from a composite of swirling, saturated colours that penetrate through the whole sculpture. It is cast from a 3D scan of the Capitoline Wolf, which is an ancient Roman sculpture. The original depicts the myth of the twins Romulus and Remus and the founding of Rome. This myth has been used with, throughout Western history to signify the move from primitive to civilized. The wild wolf child transitions into the civilized man. Ancient Rome and ancient Greece start the Western narrative of cultural refinement, defining itself against all other savage peoples. This narrative is deeply connected to whiteness, not only as a structure of privilege, but to the color itself. White becomes a signifier for civilized, cultured, and refined men. Vivid color and decoration becomes relegated to women, children, non-Western cultures, and the working class. This idea of whiteness is written about by artists and art historians from the 19th and 20th century. They connect white back to the ancient Greeks and Romans. They look at the ruins of the Acropolis and Roman statues and note what seems to be obvious. They're all white. How refined, how subtle, they thought. Goethe wrote, savage nations, uneducated people, and children have a great predilection for vivid color. Melville takes it further, defining man against nature through whiteness, stating, nature paints like a harlot. And Le Corbusier, in his purest manifesto, praises the Parthenon for its whiteness. We can see here how colour becomes ideological. Colour is used as a weapon to justify not only cultural dominance, but a white supremacist position where people of colour are structurally excluded from white and all that it signifies. Whiteness becomes a default background to Western civilization. An obvious example of how white is still privileged as this backdrop to our lives can be found at your local hardware store. Walk past the paint colour samples and notice how many white options there are. Then see how few pinks there are, how few orange and black there are. We're encouraged to surround our lives with subtle shades of white. But let's get back to Lily Cock Richard's work. Our first reading of the work might be that her use of colour disrupts this history. The bright swirling colours are the opposite of the refined whiteness of the original ancient statues and architecture. It attempts to colorize history, showing us an alternate universe where color was king. But this is not the case. Cock Richard's work isn't alternate history. It is more historically accurate than the bleach white statues currently on display in museums around the world. This is because all the arguments justifying whiteness as linked to ancient Greece are based on a lie. These white statues and buildings were never intended to be white. They were brightly colored and looked like the exact opposite of what these writers were praising. They are white now because the paint has weathered away, although fragments of the original color can still be found if we look hard enough. Color has always been at the heart of Western culture, but this history has been whitewashed. The brilliance of Cock Richard's work is that her sculptures are truer to history. Finally, we notice the base on which She-Wolf stands. It is a gray concrete footpath. Sections have been ground back, just like the council does if a tree root pushes a footpath out of place. The footpath is ground down to keep it flat and orderly. The grinding process in her work reveals vivid seams of color. It is the exact opposite of what has happened to these Greek statues. The gray is weathered away to reveal color. It is this last point that makes us think about the present, and not just the past. Cock Richards is asking us to interrogate our contemporary world, to look at all the things that are white and gray around us, and to sand them back. To sand back white museum walls, to grind down austere concrete benches, to reveal the rich, colourful story of the people who make and maintain these desaturated spaces. She asks us to sand down the very foundation on which we stand. 
if we sand back our assumptions, our own desires, our preferences and our politics, we can find a colourful, vibrant core that is often the exact opposite of what we assume it to be. In other words, Lily Cock Richard's strangely accurate art demonstrates that our beliefs often consist of the very things that we define our beliefs against. <laughs>